back and showed you and real. There you go. Snap that shit. Now real fast. Tip up. Up here. Real. Keep reeling. Never stop reeling. You on there, buddy? Yep. Nice. <laughs> nice. And you just keep your tip right over here, steering right towards us. Take your time. Ooh, he almost jumped on you. I seen him. He's fighting. Yeah, he is. Tip over here. Keep reeling. Keep reeling. Never stop reeling. There you go. Bring him right to the net. Oh, yeah, baby. Woo! Right over here. Steer him right over to me. Nope. We'll get him. Just like that. Now, when you get one, hold, keep holding the rod here. Grab the line. Pull me some line. Keep pulling. Pulling, 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 pulling. Keep on going. Dude, look at that fish. Good job, Kyle. Pass this one in. We got one going on there. But just let him take it. Let him swallow it good. I'm going to go ahead and cast. Nice thing about this style of fishing is there's no penalty for letting him have it too long. Go ahead and get him. Oh, that's him real fast. There you go. You got him. You got him. You can reel slower now. Tip up and fight him to the fight him to the net. Whack him on the head. Well, hopefully. <laughs> He's down there, I think. Oh yeah. You can see how stained the water is. Uh oh. Lost him. Oh. <laughs> Ooh, that might be a good fish. Oh, he's not cooperating. Oh, that is a nice fish. Um, come, come over here. Yeah. Go under this rod. Go right. Go under. Go that way. Keep going. There you go. Just let him fight. Good, 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 good. Whoa, here we go. Yay. Just, just nice and calm. Real, real. Keep reeling. That is a big fish. Keep reeling. Now, easy, easy, easy. He's going to go crazy when he gets close. Lift, lift your rod tip. Ooh, that's a good fish, dude. Good fish. My arm's sore. <laughs> okay, we're not leaving here. That's six pounds, buddy. Look at that. That's, that's a six pounder? Yeah. Wow. Didn't you just say you wanted to catch one like that? <laughs> My whole life, dude. <laughs> Woo! Look at that big old trout Kyle caught. That's about a six pounder right there. Awesome. All the blood on him. <laughs> 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 we'll go dip him and then we'll get the picture for your mom. <laughs> yeah, okay, let me get the net inside. There you go. You're like a professional at this, buddy. Okay, tip over here. Just steer him where you want him to go. Real nice and calm. Keep reeling. I'm going to use the net to keep him out from under the boat. See that? Keep keep reeling. Keep reeling. Real, 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 real. Okay. Now, over here. Tip over here. Lead him back around. Oh, nice fish. Another nice fish. Bring him to me. Oh, there we go. We got him, buddy. We got him. Howdy guys, Cal here, coming to you from the helm of the FHS pontoon boat. I'm kind of idling away from the floating dock here at Collins Lake. Um, had a great guide trip this morning, put a bunch of fish in the box, a bunch of rainbow trout in the box, up to six pounds. We had a four pounder, we had several fish over three. Um, just a great day, had three clients on the boat this morning. Um, 
if I had one criticism of the morning, it's the fact that I couldn't get them to go on the troll. Last Monday, just a few days ago, I had an excellent trolling session out here from the kayak. Um, I think I got seven fish total, got some on flatfish, got most of them on minnow plugs. But uh, today, I am just scratching my head as to why I couldn't get them on the troll this morning. So Lucy and I, we're gonna head out. We're gonna do some exploring this afternoon. We're gonna see if we can get a trolling bite going. Um, we're gonna try some plugs. We're gonna try some spoons, maybe some flies, some different things. But uh, join me out here on the water as I kind of go through the progression. I'll kind of share with you what I'm thinking, the changes I'm making. I'm going to start off with the same Yozuri minnow plug that I was doing very well on on Monday. And on my other rod, I am going to run a orange trigger spoon, orange on the top, uh, chrome on the back, um, with a little weight on the line. So basically, I'm going to be top lining everything. I'm going to go back in the same area I was fishing um, out of the kayak from on Monday and see if we could generate some strikes and then uh, if we don't, I'll start working through some different patterns, some different lures, different speeds. I'm going to kind of peg my speed right now at 2.4 miles an hour and I'm going to put the baits back about 150 feet behind the pontoon boat here. So let's get started. I'm going to, I'm going to give her a little I'm gonna give her a little gas here. I'm gonna take off and get over here where we wanna do some trolling and uh, we'll get the gear in the water and I will be coming right back at you real soon, hopefully with a fish on the end of my line. see here by myself so <laughs> trying to control the boat I'm in really shallow water who are you jumping back there awesome 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 it's kind of turning out here actually I don't have another line in the water right now so I'll just kill the motor whoo he jumped I don't think he's huge but uh definitely a fish that is on the yozuri once again so let's see i got the remote right here so whoa 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 i'm basically dead in the water here which is cool so the yozuri paid off came across the hump right there and uh fish on I was right in the middle of changing lures I wanted to try something in a in a gold tone and I still will but I want to land this fish right here oh yeah oh beautiful nice fish cool deal oh yeah <laughs> oh man I don't care what anybody says these things are fun let's see here get the net ready You can get this character in the net. Oh, he's all turned around and upside down and everything. Here we go. Now. Right there, just like that. Well, that's a hefty fish. Set that right there. This guy up here. See if we can get him. See if we can get him unbuttoned and uh, back into the water i think so go a little forward momentum he's looking good okay i'm gonna get the gear back in the water but there's that plug right there i believe that's called the brook trout pattern uh yozuri el minnow and i think that's the two and three quarter inch size right there but anyway that's the plug that did it today Okay guys, bear with me, I'm out here by myself. I'm steering with the remote. I'm in pretty shallow water going about 2.4 miles an hour. Um, so what is it about that Yozuri El Minnow that's drawing the strikes? Is it the color, the profile, 
the action, the speed, the depth, what is it? And uh, you know, I'm not a fish. I don't know 100% for sure. I don't think it's color. I think they want something that's shiny. I think they want something that's in that silver tone. I definitely think they want a little bit bigger profile bait than say a Trigger Spoon Junior or a, a T-Tiny Rapala, something like that. I think that's due to the, the clarity of the water. I think a bigger lure gives them a bigger profile. Um, I think the number one thing about that plug is its action. Got a ton of wiggle at this speed, a ton of wiggle. Um, way more wiggle than you would get when trolling a Rapala of a similar size. And I also think the combo I'm running, it's back there about 175 to 190 feet. You know, that's kind of where I'm putting it behind the boat. I think it just happens to be running at the correct depth for the fish. Now I'm experimenting with some other baits. Um, I pulled a full size trigger um, through this zone got nothing took it off didn't give it a lot of time to perform but again I hooked up on the Yozuri so right now I've uh, I've put on a gold crankbait on the other rod and we're giving it a chance to perform but I'm gonna kind of keep working through this zone at least for another half an hour or so and to see what lure seems to be performing the best to see if I can get them on something other than the Yozuri El Minnow um, once we do that I'm gonna go out I'm gonna check some other areas check some other areas for fish um, I know some other areas they're holding fish. So once I settle on a productive pattern out here, and it may be that Elmino, I don't know, we're gonna go check some other areas before dark. One of the problems with late winter fishing is you're dealing with a shortened day and uh, the time that I spend out on the lake scouting is after my clients go home. So I got about a two hour window to work with. So we'll stay at it. Hey guys, the sun is going down. Um, it's kind of concluding day one. Um, I have some thoughts about different kinds of plugs, trolling plugs, minnow plugs, flatfish style baits and stuff like that. Um, let's talk a little bit more about that stuff when we get back to camp. And uh, also I'm going to talk a little bit about the plan for tomorrow. Um, gathered a lot of intel today. Um, kick it around a little bit. I'll toss out what I'm thinking and why. And uh, we'll see if it pays off tomorrow. Anyway, I'll catch you back in camp once we get in the... Uh, easy up and get the heater going get dinner taken care of and all that kind of stuff i'll see you in camp howdy guys it's about 7 a.m saturday morning as you can see behind me the lake is just ideal we got just a slight amount of breeze to ripple the surface and uh, i am looking forward to getting out there i got three clients on the way i'm going to meet them up at the store here at collins lake at 7 30. um Yesterday afternoon, I said I was going to go back to the, the Easy Up in Camp and talk about minnow plugs. Well, I'm actually going to do that this afternoon because I'm still thinking about them. I've, I've got some interesting conclusions, nothing I can prove, but uh, we'll get into that discussion later today when I'm done with my clients. Um, what's the plan for this morning? Yesterday morning, I started out trolling, um, got nothing, then switched to bait fishing, um, Mid to late morning, I saw a guy in a kayak. He was kind of lighting them up on the troll. Um, we fished bait all day yesterday after we stopped trolling because we were we were snapping some big fish on power bait. Um, but today, I got a little different strategy. Once I was done with my clients yesterday, I started trolling. I started getting fish on the troll. We're going to start out with bait today. But when I start seeing that temperature elevating, the surface temperature elevating, probably 10.30 or 11 o'clock, we're going to finish out the day on the troll. It just seems to me that as the temperature rises, those trout are getting more and more active back in the shallows and more likely to, to chase. In the morning, they were fairly lethargic, but uh, they would definitely get on the bait, stay with the bait, swallow the bait, would put the fish in the box. So that's the plan for today. Bait then we're going to troll, then we're going to clean some fish hopefully, and then we're going to talk about minnow plugs and do some afternoon trolling. Got to try some different stuff, keep working different areas. Anyway, um, Lucy and I, we're going to continue with our walk here and uh, we'll be up to the store at about 7.30 to meet our clients.
bring him right. Well, he might be a big one. Oh, he's not a big one, but he's way over there. I just work here. I, I'm not responsible for everything. Oh, that's pretty good. Look at it's a little tarpon. Yeah. Okay, tip over here. Nope, tip over. Yeah, no. Nope, come over here. Keep reeling this way. Nope, over over that one then. There you go. Yeah, perfect. Well, he's tangled in that one. Oh, well. We'll worry about that part later. He's in the boat. Okay, backing up. Now here, this is kind of, well, I was going to say, we're going to, yeah, we can still. We're going to play, we're going to play a game called damage control here. <laughs> Lead him right over to me. Wow, he swam right into the net. That was good. Yay. He's a little skinny guy. That's okay. You gotta pick through these little guys to get the big guys, maybe. Okay, you got another fish on. Oh, he's not. Oh, he's a nice one. Wow. Woo! Oh, yeah. That was a jumper. That's a, that's fish of the day. I think. Look at that. Got my camera on. Woo! Big fish. Nice. There we go. What? Going through the gill? Yeah. That works on little stripers too. That the little ones that chug it down and yeah. got all throat hooked. Hey. Nice. Yeah, that's a chunky one. Well, guys, I'm done with my clients. We had a pretty good day today. We had 12 rainbows to about four pounds. Um, nothing huge today. A um, couple on the troll today. Most of the fish came on bait, but uh, I sent home some happy people nevertheless. Um, we fished bait in a few different locations, but it's time to talk about minnow plugs because that's been the best trolling bait for me up here at Collins Lake at this time, um, particularly the... Uh, the Yozuri L minnows. It's like that one there. That's been the hot color. I believe that's called brook trout. But we've been getting them on the on the silver and greenback models. And I've also been getting a few fish on this basically a Yozuri clone. It's a it's a copy of a Yozuri. It comes from China. Great action on that. It's got a chartreuse back, red head. So I've been popping a few fish on that too. The question is though, why am I getting the fish on plugs? And you could say, well. I gotta keep watching where I'm going here because I am I am doing some test trolling. I got a couple cripple minnows out and I got one bite on a cripple minnow here a few minutes ago. But uh, so why am I getting hit on plugs? So you say, you know, they have a lot of flash and they have a lot of vibration. Well, so does a trigger spoon, just like that. Lots of flash, lots of vibration, has a great kick in the water at anywhere from about two three to two seven, all the way up to three miles an hour. So why would I be catching fish on this, you know, Yozuri clone and not catching fish on one of my trigger spoons? And, uh, you know, I've been thinking about this quite a bit. And there's one factor that I hadn't been considering and to, to really think about it, we need to look at, the, look at the plug in that direction, see how broad and wide it is. If you look at a spoon, it's obviously very thin. It's a thin piece of metal. In addition to having great flash and great vibration, a plug like that it displaces more water than a spoon now this is all theory for me but i think that water displacement is just another form of vibration that is detected by the fish we are dealing with very stained water here and we need to put out a pretty good signature to get those fish to come in um, dodgers don't seem to be the the right recipe right now flashers don't seem to be the right recipe right now Certainly spoons aren't working that great, or I would be trolling spoons, but the plugs are, and I think, you know, part of the charm of the plugs, part of the effectiveness of the plugs is the fact that they move more water than a spoon, they move more water than a fly, um, they just displace more water, the fish have an easier time detecting them through their lateral line, they come in, they see a smaller fish, fish on, you're happy, your client's happy, whatever the case may be, fish on. Now I'll have a lot of folks ask me, you know, how do I choose one plug over another? And you know, it, it's the same rationale I use when I'm picking a trolling fly or a spoon or whatever. I've got to consider the size, I've got to consider 
the color, the finish on the plug, and I also need to consider how quickly I can troll that plug, okay? If I wanna troll quickly, I'm gonna choose something like this Yozuri, something like this jointed Rapala there. I can troll these all the way up to four miles an hour very effectively, very deadly. They work very well at high speeds as well as at moderate to medium speeds. If I wanna go slow, if I wanna go one mile an hour, one and a half miles an hour, I'm being much better served choosing a standard flat fish like that. In terms of being effective across the range of speeds, there are a few plugs, but the one I always choose for that work is the Maglev. It'll work at one and a half miles an hour. You can take it all the way up to three miles an hour, and it has that skip beat action, which means it'll lock into a swimming pattern and then it kicks out. It'll lock into a swimming pattern and it'll kick out. That, that kick out is when it triggers the strikes most often. Anytime you can add erratic action to your presentation, you're gonna hook more fish, and that action is built into the mag lift. And again, you control it across a range of speeds. I control this aside of a worm and dodger at 1.8, or I control it beside this Rapala right here at three miles an hour. It's just as effective at both speeds. I control it at 2.2, 2.4 when I'm pulling spoons, whatever. Very versatile in terms of speed. When it comes to color or lure finish, you know, I really tend to start off with the natural bait fish colored stuff. Here at this lake, it's, you know, thread fin shad, so I like the chromes, I like the chrome and blue, chrome and black back, stuff like that. Um, I always try the natural colored stuff before moving to the bright stuff like this, and I have been playing with some bright stuff because the water's so stained here. But hey, guess what? The natural colored plug has still been outperforming the bright chartreuse colored plug. So remember, just because the water stained, it doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna do better on a bright colored plug. So that's kind of my perspective on, on plug colors, you know, choosing my plugs. Uh, speed is a big consideration. Also, you have to consider the size of the fish you intend to catch and the size of the bait in the lake. You know, this is a threadfin shad lake and no shad are gonna top out at about three inches. And this is about as big of a plug as I will use here at Collins Lake. And uh, I'll go down from there. I'm not gonna pull out a big old six inch, you know, or five inch Rapala and troll it out here because there's really no forage that size out here. The fish are looking to feed on bait fish. They're be grabbing stuff in that size range. Or maybe something even a little smaller like the size of that flat fish right there. So. When you're considering which plug to use, consider the speed, the size of the fish you intend to catch, and the size of the forage in the lake that you're fishing. Um, and you know, just try to dial your plug in to your presentation. If you think if you think the fish are aggressive, by all means, put on some plugs like this jointed Rapala here that you control very quickly. If you think the fish are a little more sluggish, a little more lethargic, if you want to go with a maglip and troll them around 2.2 miles an hour, but if you think you need to go really slow, you might want to play with flat fish, stuff that's going to run in that one to one and a half mile an hour range. Now, I was out here this week in my kayak and I thought I would do better on flat fish than I would on the faster moving plugs. And I did, I slowed down to one mile an hour. I was pulling a little F5 flat fish in very shallow water. My thinking was, I'm gonna have maximum vibration, maximum flash in a plug that's moving slow, therefore it's gonna stay in the strike zone longer. I did catch fish on it, but I didn't catch any more fish on it than I was catching on the Yozuri, trolling it between 2.2 two and 2.4. So that's kind of my thoughts on a plug. I think they displace a lot of water. I think that's important in stained conditions like this, and that's why I attribute you know, plugs to outperforming my, sp my spoons right now at this time. That could change with better water clarity. It could change with rising water temperatures. And uh, you know, you just gotta keep experimenting with the fish, taking the fish's temperature, and really dial in what the fish want based on what the fish are telling you. Well guys, Lucy and I are wrapping up another productive week here in the Sierra Foothills up at beautiful Collins Lake. I wanted to check in before I stow these trolling rods and put the boat back in the slip. Um, we had guide trips five out of the last six days here at the lake and the fishing was very good and it's pretty typical of what you'd expect to see in the late winter, early spring, you know, kind of time period. Um, at times, the trolling was absolutely brilliant. 
At other times, the bait fishing was off the hook. There were some slow periods, but uh, we got into very good bites every day. For the most part, we landed limits of fish to about seven pounds. Um, we had a lot of fish in the two to three pound range to round out the limits, but we had fish that weighed in at uh, four, six, and seven pounds on the big end this week. Um, we got some of those fish trolling, we got some of those fish on bait. If the weather holds steady, I think we're gonna continue to see the trolling improve. I've been getting trolling strikes every single day. Had a couple trolling strikes this morning while power trolling, and that's a great sign. The surface temperature is slowly inching up. The lake level continues to rise, but the clarity is improving, and that's what's driving you know this trolling action we're seeing. We weren't seeing that action two, three weeks ago, but uh, now I, I think we're right on the verge of seeing trolling bust loose. Now, if we get a cold snap, if we get a rainstorm, it's definitely gonna set the trolling bite back and we're gonna be back into pretty much steady bait fishing. The fish are shallow for the most part. You'll mark fish down deep, 20, 30 feet deep. I cannot get those fish to go. I can't get them to go on bait. I can't get them to go on lures. Um, the fish I've been catching are from the surface to 10 feet deep. I start out really shallow in the morning. When I get the high sun, I'll drop down into that eight to 10 foot range. That's been working. Um, on the trolling side, cripple minnow spoons and uh, various types of minnow plugs have been working well. Key speeds for me have been anywhere from about 2.2 up to three miles an hour. That's the, the range of speeds where I've been getting the strikes. Probably the most productive speed is about 2.4, I would say. On the bait fishing side, power bait, power bait, power bait, garlic scent, power bait. I've been using green, I've been using rainbow. The color isn't as important as the scent. Um, keep your baits, you know, about 18 inches off the bottom and work that shallow depth range anywhere from, you know, I'd say two feet to six feet deep. Early, we're getting our fish up in two, three feet of water. And they do, you do see them start to move off a little bit when the sun gets higher in the sky. But that's pretty much it for now. We're gonna go grab some ice cream and we are gonna hit the road. We're gonna go home. We're gonna watch those 49ers play some football and uh, hopefully we're gonna see another Northern California Super Bowl. We will see what happens. Anyway, I'm gonna pull this gear. I'm gonna put the boat in the slip, get a little rest and we will be back at it out here at Collins, week, uh, Collins Lake next week. I can't even talk with a full schedule of clients. Um, I think we've got a few openings here in the next week or so, and then we do have availability in February. Again, I'll be out here chasing trout through the month of June, so if you wanna get out and learn the finer points of trout fishing with me on the water, go on over to fishhuntshoot.com and book your trip now. And of course, if you're looking for gear, you'll find that up there too. I'm There we go, one for me and one for the dog. You know what this is? You know what that is? Leave it, leave it. Oh man, that's your ice cream. Good work this week, here you go. Get after it, oh my, <laughs> you crazy dog, look at you go.